Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Uh, today we're going to be installing uh, this head unit into the car. I um, actually got this one off of Alibaba. It's a little bit newer than, say, your Digital Octopus uh, DC-10-15. Uh, this one, the knobs are completely separate from the display and there's no um, home menu, nav, any of that on the side. It's, it's a little cleaner setup. This is also the slim line. So you can see it's uh, very slim. Lots of room behind it to put uh, all the cabling and any extra things you gotta put back there during the install. Uh, this one uh, should have wireless CarPlay. It's also uh, 4G. So you can put a SIM card in it and it should also have um, uh, Wi-Fi as well. Of course, you got the GPS antenna, uh, rear backup camera, which it comes with. And I don't know if I'm going to use this or not because I have a backup camera already that's in a great spot. The same thing with the microphone. It comes with the microphone, and we're going to be doing a special install on this if I can't reuse the one that's already in the car. Um, Here's the 4G uh, SIM card, uh, I don't know what you call this, a dongle. So the SIM card goes in there. I'm not going to be using a SIM card. This is the CAN bus decoder. Okay, so this is my view in the car. And you'll notice this fan control knob almost completely obscures my oil pressure gauge. I have to actually kind of go around it to look at it, you know. <laughs> this is just in my way. I don't know if it's just my height or, or what, but I don't like these knobs being here. So this should eliminate that with the new head unit and I should be able to see the whole display. All right, well, the first thing we're gonna do is take the console out. Not to scratch everything up. Uh, so I did put a little bit of tape there to keep that from scratching it, and also on the piece itself. Um, I'm gonna take you under here a little bit. Might not be the best of lighting, but there's two seven millimeter bolts right here. I gotta take those out. This is the underside of the radio. These two have to come out. Those are the only two bolts. I'm sure you've probably seen other videos, a ton of videos out there about it. So we're gonna take them out and then we should be able to get the head unit out. So hey, make sure you guys uh, disconnect the negative terminal on your battery before you start this. Sometimes I assume you guys just know that, but I don't know who's new here and has never done things like this before. Okay, so what I used was one of these for taking the top off a paint can, put a little tape on it to protect it because it is metal. It went right behind there and it pulled it right out. That worked really good. So we got that loose, but the bottom is still kind of hanging on down there. There we go. That just unplugs. And then there's one in the back that unplugs. And that just lifts out. These are also seven millimeter. You could probably loosen them by hand. They're barely in there. Take these out, and I'll show you what else is behind it. You gotta push in on that. So you gotta push in on that piece there. And that pops this up. And that bar comes up and cams that out. blue one 
That's an easy one. The tan one. That's an easy one. Interesting. That's USB. I know that is FM antenna, I believe. That might be OnStar. Well, here we are on the back of the radio. Uh, this one says 4G, so that is going to be for this antenna. This one says GPS, so that is this one. Now the CAN bus is going to be part of this harness because this is the one that goes into the car's harness. So it's going to be this connector here. It's kind of easy to get this one mixed up with this one uh, because they're similar but not quite. This is all just microphone and audio, audio and video out, and it has the 4G. That doesn't connect to the uh, to the CAN bus. CAN bus will go on this one. So we're going to connect that. number six six pin goes right next to the other USB this is a 10 pin and it goes right in there big pin one and it can only go in that slot on the upper left there is another open slot back there I don't know what it's for might be for inside the car, but I don't know. So this wire here, this is going to be the car side. This is the FM antenna. It is going to go right in here. And it just pushes in. That's like old school. I'm not sure what this thing is here. It uh, almost looks like an optical port. I'm trying to figure out where the door chime goes. Well, I did find it. So the chime is actually uh, right here. It just plugs into that. All these are labeled. So they should just plug into uh, to these. And the other ones are for if you have amplifiers or also for the camera. And uh, and of course the microphone that will plug in. Uh, microphone goes right to that one. This says OnStar. All right, so uh, found some notes um, and the auxiliary in. I'm not going to use the key one and two is not used in the Camaro platform and I don't believe the reverse is either because the rear camera is actually triggered off the reverse light bulb that's what powers the camera so the CVBSN 1 and 2 those are for uh, DVD systems along with the audio outs um, auxiliary ends uh, not sure what the blue wire is. It's probably a trigger for the DVR system. And the sub out is exactly what it is. So on this one here, uh, these two aren't used, but this is the backup camera. 
So on that plug there, there is no plug there for sure, but this is going to be the backup camera. And then as far as the DVR camera for the front, uh, that will connect to one of the USBs. Uh, doesn't matter which, apparently. And then the other USB you could use for updating the system. So this should be ready to plug in. Uh, there shouldn't be pretty much anything else needed. Uh, I did find out that the 4G is also the Wi-Fi port. So when you see this Wi-Fi blank, uh, that, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have Wi-Fi. It just means that the Wi-Fi is carried into the 4G port. So this antenna uh, not only does the 4G cellular, but it's also the Wi-Fi antenna. So that was a point of confusion for me. And these little blue ones here, I don't know what they are. I, think. I know you guys can't see anything, but uh, really I just plugged in the microphone, or plugged in the, uh, the black antenna wire into the antenna port of the radio, hooked the big connector up, and then connected the white connector uh, you can't mix up the white and the tan one. You just can't do it. Um, so there's three connections. And then I plugged in the GPS to its GPS antenna port and the Wi-Fi antenna to its Wi-Fi port. And I just want to test it. Um, there's a bunch of flopping wires. It's going to have to be all buttoned up. But I want to power it up and just kind of make sure it at least somewhat works uh, before I actually go installing it and running wires for the microphone and the camera and all that. So let's see if it'll at least power on. Okay, so I got the battery connected. Okay, the chime's different. Oh, and there it is. The chime is definitely different. Not as dingy as the uh, GM one, but makes all the basic tones. It was just telling me that my trunk's open. So the door lock and unlock do not work, uh, which doesn't surprise me because this is geared more toward the 2010, 2012 that had the door lock on the original radio. Uh, mine has never had door lock and unlock on the radio. That sounds really weird. Hazard works. So my overall impression so far is it feels a little cheap, like the, like the knob. It's just kind of wiggly. I mean the stock one's wiggly too, but this is like cheap wiggly. All right, well, uh that kind of explains the wiring. Uh there's a ton of videos out on um how to really set this up and how to set all this up. We took some white clips off the corners here and put them here so we don't forget I'm going to try to connect this into the USB in the car and see if it goes through to the console, um, the armrest console. I think that one USB that came out of here, because you can plug into that console and connect to the radio, and I think that is what that does, and that way I can still utilize that USB in the... <coughs> in the armrest and I don't have to use this you know hanging out the floor or whatever the GPS I'm gonna put up on the dash in the corner where you can't see it I like to have it up there where I can get a good signal and the microphone we're going to take that apart and put it up where the um, OEM microphone is it's too bad so much of this stuff runs through the body control module I don't want to tear that up because if this thing ever fails and I want to put that back in, all I got to do is take this out and plug that one in and this one will work. So I don't want to, I don't want to cut any wires. I've taken off the, uh, the side cover there. 
I've also taken out, boy, it's really hard for you guys to see, taken out the glove box. And you can see that hole right there. That's where it, uh, the glove box uh, clips in. There's two of them. And then there's this thing. And you got to watch out for that. You need to disconnect that before you pull the glove box down. You got to kind of pull the sides out. This thing, um, it's a string, but it's kind of like a, a spring-loaded string. It helps to slow the, uh, slow the door coming down. And let me show you where that fits. So here are the clips I was telling you about that fit into those holes. And right here is where that string piece connects in. So it just fits under there and the string comes up. So when you open the box it doesn't just slam open it, it gives it some some pull to to slow its roll you got to push these in to get these to clear the sides uh, when you go to take out the box and uh, this cover is really easy it just just fit a screwdriver in there and it just pops straight out probably one of the easiest panels to take off in the whole car I'm probably going to run the GPS antenna up here in the corner. And I'm going to hide the wire up in the A pillar. I don't think I can tuck it in right there. So I'm probably going to go up and then around and then down and then through to here. I got plenty of wires. So that's not a problem. I can't use the, the one that's in the car now because it's never had navigation, so it's never had one of these antennas. In the service manual, they show three antennas in the car, and I'm pretty sure I only got two, uh, because I've only found two coax, the satellite coax and the FM coax. And there's the satellite coax right there. And I believe that's the shark fin uh, going to the, you know, on the roof for XM radio, uh, but no GPS. And if the car has it, I don't know where the coax is, but this car was too early of a generation to have navigation. It came out a couple months later on the MyLink. Okay, I just gotta tuck those in a little bit more. This was really easy to do because on the other side of here, you can put your finger in between the seal and kind of pull down on this cover a little bit and just run that wire right around there. And I left it up here because this has an airbag in it. I think that has an airbag in it. Yeah, there's an airbag in here because there's one on the other side. I remember when I put those gauges in. So just kind of want to clear that. Uh, Nothing to worry about with the airbag. This antenna is not going to set off the airbag or anything. It's not putting out any energy or anything like that. But you can see I just pushed it inside that seal there. And there it is coming out. And I'm just going to run it through there. It's going to be really easy to find a, a way to go. And then uh, I might as well leave that side off and this off until I get the microphone done because it's going to do the same thing except it's going to run on the inside of the headliner and down in here and down.
It's called a condenser mic. There's two types of microphones that I know of, uh, condenser and dynamic. This is a condenser mic. And we're going to try to set it in there and maybe uh, put something over it so it doesn't move around. All right, well, we got some one minute epoxy here. see his felt on the other side yeah, so it's the microphone it's covering covering the hole so I was able to feed the wire up over that on the right side to the other side of uh, the electronics that's in this box of the mirror and that way I can run it down the top uh, without getting behind this piece here. So now we can go ahead and put, put that screw back in and put all this back together. So now that I ran it all the way along and then down the pillar sorry it's getting dark here <laughs> I'm going to take some of the uh, the split loom the stuff that you get at the store and I'm gonna cover the wire here because it's metal inside the door right there that bracket I don't want it rubbing on that bracket so I'm gonna run the split loom all the way up to the to the pillar and then underneath just to protect it from chafing on that metal there you know it will so I ran it around that bracket, behind this duct, behind this bracket, and up there. And out that hole in the back. Well, the 4G antenna's next, and I can tell you where I'm not gonna put it. I'm not gonna put it on the back side of this. Uh, because it's not flat on the other side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the back side of this uh, black uh, housing. I believe it's the uh, where the blend door and some of the other stuff is. And I'll just stick it on there and then yeah, the wire will just continue to stay tied. I think that's the best place for it right there. We still have to put the chime in. And it's been recommended to put right here. So behind here. Which feels like a good spot. That way we can just pull the wire over the top of the plastic and be done with it. So we're just going to pull off the tape here. Or not the tape, but the uh, paper backer and stick it in there. This thing's surprisingly heavy. I mean, it's it's got some heft to it. I'm not sure why. There must be a magnet in it, would be my guess. But And there it is, right in the hole there. You can see it right there, my finger on it. And we just brought the wire out. So we're... Well, I realize that I did not uh, connect OnStar. So the red and blue that says OnStar 
negative and positive. They need to connect to the auxiliary one, red and blue in this little stack here in order to get the OnStar to work. So, Well, I'm kind of looking into using the existing camera for the backup camera since I like the angle it's at. This is a schematic for the camera. On page 13-42 of the service manual. And this is the rear backup camera. This is the camera down here. This is the radio. So this doesn't go through the body control module at all. Uh, you have power. This is the reverse uh, switch. So when it's put in reverse, um, that's the trigger for that. And then you have the shielded wire for the signal of the camera going up to the radio. So it's a pink and light blue wire and X4, I believe that's the connector type. That should be the connector type. And so we can actually go into my book uh, in the house and look at what an X4 looks like. And it should tell us exactly what the plug that plugged into that is. And we could put an RCA right on that and probably get away with that instead of running a separate camera. Let's try it. This one here is kind of proven to me that uh, that USB mini that connects to the radio, which is right here, says it goes to the auxiliary audio input. So I'm thinking that might be in that uh, glove box area. Not the glove box, but the center console. Okay, so thing about service manuals is it seems like you have to open up two or three to figure out what you want. Okay, so once again, here's the camera. Here's the radio. It says A11. So you go over to this uh, portion that has all the receptacles. And of course you see A11 there, and there's A11 there, and it's continued. So this is a connector. So A11 radio X1 is this one that has the bail. Uh, X4. That's this one. So we go down here. Camera signal negative. Light blue pin 15. Camera signal positive is pink pin 5. So pin 5 and pin 15 go to the camera. So if we could find a way to get a connector to hook up to that with an RCA and plug it into our side, we may be able to just use their camera. This is going to be the tan connector, the white one we're using on the radio. The tan connector is not used. I know it's the tan one because this uh, index is right in the middle. We're on the white one. You see it's offset. Plus it looks different. So the next one over is pink. So that first pink one next to the other pink, the first pink one is camera. And then flipping it over, the one on the bottom right is pin 11. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They're calling it light blue, but it's looks more like I guess it's light blue. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So right there, those two colors, right on the end, pink on the right blue on the left those are your cameras we can probably connect the camera 
RCA directly to this. If we can figure out how to wire up a pin and an RCA socket where we can just plug an adapter into that, that would be cool. And well, I've already spoke about that. We know what that is. So that's how you trace it down. What a pain in the butt. Well, I just did a quick jumper job and plugged it into the video. I'm getting a lot of static. I know I'm getting a signal from the camera because I can unplug it and it goes away. So I know that is coming from the camera. And I thought, well, maybe it's because it's in PAL. But I put it into N, uh, NTSC and it completely goes away. I tried all these different uh, settings here and uh, none of them work. Put in reverse, it switches over, but no picture. So I don't think the factory camera is going to work. It must not have, I don't know, maybe it doesn't have enough signal uh, strength. I, I just don't know. Maybe the signal noise might be too high. I, I really don't know. But flipping NTSC and back to PAL uh, doesn't seem to do anything for it. It shows up, but no image. It's all just different types of static. So whatever camera GM used, it's not compatible with this head unit. Nothing. So I guess we're stuck using their camera. It was worth a try. The quick and dirty test, I just connected the camera up to a 9 volt just to get signal down the wire, uh, their wire, their camera, and it has a picture and it's in color. So I guess the car's camera just doesn't work for it. So we're going to have to install theirs. What a bummer. Well, I'm not going to be mounting the camera uh, that came with this radio. I ended up buying a camera that mounts where the license plate light goes and uh, actually is powered off the reverse light to power the camera. Let me show you how to take that bulb out. So if you take a screwdriver and right along the side here, just push in on that tab and it just comes out like that so you'll be disconnecting this piece and then the clear plastic in the camera will be built in and I think I can get to the other side through this hole to run the cable for the camera but we're going to take this off first well, if you're wanting to run your wiring by taking off your rear bumper fascia, I have another video where I show how to take this off. Um, I didn't want to do that this time. And I didn't want to try to pull this area out. Uh, you're not going to be able to pull that out really very easily. And you risk cracking the paint, uh, especially if it's cold out. Well, there is another way to get your camera wiring come out here for your camera that's going to be installed and that is using an aircraft drill now I use this one and I actually went up inside the hole there very carefully and drilled the hole all the way through and then I came back with a step drill and enlarged it so there's the hole and it goes all the way through and you can fish uh, a hanger or something stiff down in there all the way through the hole to be able to pull your wire up through. Uh, you can even make this hole a little bit bigger. This thing here 
uh, it's probably going to have just enough room for your wire to clear and come down and then come down into the well here where you can route it up to the front of the car. That's my plan. I'm going to take the wire. It's somewhat stiff. And I'm just going to sight it. So in case you missed it, the red and black wire is going to power the camera off of the reverse light. So as soon as it goes in reverse, uh, it will be uh, getting power for the camera from there. Kind of wish they would have ran that to the front. Probably would have been easier. Maybe that's what that green wire is. I'll ring that out and see how that works. Well, if you decide to go this route instead of taking the uh, bumper off, be sure to leave yourself some extra in case you take the bumper off. That way, uh, when you pull the bumper off, you're not pulling on the wire. You have plenty of slack in there. So we can just shove all that up in there. We're probably going to do this last because we're going to run the cable all the way to the front to make sure we have enough. Bring the slack back and then slack it all up inside here. <clears throat> so if we ever take the fascia off, um, it'll be obvious to us there's a wire there and we can deal with it. Okay, so I finally got my pieces in the mail uh, for the rear camera. I'll put a link in the description at the bottom, uh, best I can on this. So this is the one that came with the car. I just took it out to see how it fit. It's kind of sloppy and it keeps rotating. Uh, that's not too big of a deal. I can fix that. So the camera comes with power and signal. It is going to be on the left hand side. Uh, so right where we drilled the hole, I was worried that it was going to be the other side, but this is how it's going to install. So here we are at the back. We need to get power and ground to these. Uh, these wires basically go to this. They just loop around inside this thing. Uh, of course, that's our camera, and this is our uh, license plate light. Uh, this only has power, of course, when like the fog lights are on, the headlights are on, driving lights. Um, if it's bright outside and you have all your lights off, your reverse camera won't work. Now this is the car harness side. Now this wiring diagram is for the ZL1 2014 only. I don't know what colors yours are going to be. Um, it's whatever the white wire from the hero side that is the, the reverse. In this case it is the light green. So light green is positive reverse and this black one in the corner I ring out with my meter is ground. So we're going to tie into these two and wire it to that. And we're going to snake it through here and through this side and into this connector. That way when the reverse light's on, uh, the camera will be on. I've already tested it with some jumpers and it works, so I know that's going to I know that's going to be all right. What I ended up doing here was routing the power wires for the camera uh, up through here. I put, just put an extension on it and put it in through the side using a grommet. And I attached it into the main harness. I hate these things, but really it was the only way to go in this instance. The positive went to the light green. Um, the black went to the black. You can see I used uh, blue and black wire because, well, that's all I had. So, got to wrap these up a little bit, but they'll be, they'll be good over here. And I've made the hole up here just because water intrusion past the cover when I'm washing the car. I'm sure water probably makes it down here, maybe a little bit. Um, obviously not enough for 
them to worry about any of that so I'm not going to worry too much about it but I am going to clean up these wires a little get them hugged there and put that cover back on and I tested it out and it works so in order to test uh, the backup camera I'm going to have to actually put it in reverse because that won't do it because the reverse lights don't come on unless you're actually engine running Well, if you're hoping to use your USB auxiliary down there, um, it was disconnected when you took your factory radio out. But you do have an option. So here you'll see the factory USB. It looks like a USB micro, but it's not. So this cable here, this little jumper cable, this is plugging into um, the USB for the head unit here. and. It's not a USB micro up here. It's called a USB to GM1. Uh, it's for certain year cars. It fits um, all the Camaros, uh, at least the fifth gens. And I don't remember about the sixth gen. I think it goes up to 2017. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, if you look up USB GM1 on Google, you can find these. I think it costs $10 on Amazon. But uh, yeah, it connected up to the factory uh, USB harness, jumped over to the uh, head unit, and then we still have this one if we want to upload music. Now the USB, I believe they're both the same, so it shouldn't matter. Um, but this one I can use to plug in my dongle or I don't know, whatever. I mean, I don't even think I need it now. This one's working, but... Let me show you. One of the reasons I wanted this to work is I wanted to use this uh, little charging pad because I wanted to be able to um, charge my phone wirelessly. And it's charging. Now definitely one of the harder parts is getting this piece behind this and I found if you push up here you can pull this out quite a bit and it kind of hangs there but if you push up in this corner you can get this one over this ledge and then push up here and get that one over that lat, that edge and then um, that just pops back in place and then yeah it just you just lift up and push those two tabs in and yeah that's it right now got to put the uh, seven millimeters in and the extra seven millimeters I'm gonna put in a bag and put with the radio so I don't lose them <laughs> something else I forgot to mention the coax that screws into the back of the radio for the GPS antenna and the 4G antenna. Don't leave them finger tight. Tighten them a little bit with the wrench. Don't crank on them, you'll break them. Um, but just enough where your fingers can't loosen them. All right, everybody, well, the install's complete. And as you can see, I can see my oil pressure gauge. I'm really happy about that. No more knobs cluttering up my gauges. So works really good. I got my Apple CarPlay, got my Pandora, I have navigation, um, touchscreen, really nice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up, give me a like, so consider subscribing and uh, share it with your friends. Until then, we'll see you on the next video.